what platforms are you on? Are you solely focused just on Facebook or have you kind of diversified? I mean, Facebook's always been my first love, but I mean, I'm open to any traffic source that's profitable yeah. and where my people are hanging out. So mm -hmm. that does play into the considerations. Seven Figure Entrepreneur Podcast, the number one podcast bringing you behind the scenes with real online earners, no fake gurus here. And today we have the wonderful Molly Pittman, CEO of Smart Marketer. Uh, yeah. Woo. <laughs> so anyone who doesn't know what Smart Marketer is, it's basically um, Ezra Firestone's like educational side, right? Educational mm -hmm. company. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Man, I feel like everyone's done something from Smart Marketer. I have. I know I have for sure. Tyler has. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely spent some money on Smart Marketer. Yeah. Yeah. It's been cranking stuff out for eight to 10 years over there. So that makes I know sense. it was something that I followed when I was coming up in the game too. So. Yeah. 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 And it's it, the, way, the way you guys teach stuff is so good too. Like direct layouts, like completely like the, I think the email one was the one I remember the best and how it would just... Mm. You would just like give like step by step by step. If so and so does this, follow up with this, and then everything. I think we mentioned that in the last podcast episode too, didn't we? I feel like we mentioned it in a lot of podcasts. Just discount so deadlines. I, I think that was a Ezra Firestone special tagline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys for mentioning it. Yeah, that's a cool product, and they actually updated every month too. I don't know if you know that, but oh wow, you I didn't know that. For it, you pay for it once, and then every month. Laura, who is, you guys meet in the class and she's actually setting up the emails and doing the work. Yeah. She's doing monthly updates with like what emails work best. And, oh, that's super um, cool. So yeah. That I is think awesome. Trying the, to keep people the gift updated. That keeps giving. Yeah. yeah right? that's the, part of Smart Marketer that I'm really excited about is just Ezra and I align on values in such a yeah. huge way. Like, of course yeah. we like need to make, not need to, but of course we will make money from this because it's yeah. a business, but we also both just really like it and it's fun. Yeah. And I get to like do this as a job. I'm sitting in Amsterdam talking to you guys. That's awesome. <laughs> and awesome. this is my job. So um, I think what's cool is that's really going to show up even more in the product line than it ever has before. And most of our products have, you know, an ongoing aspect to it, or you actually get access to us, or we actually keep it updated. Um, just mm -hmm. trying to fill the gaps that you know, we've both seen in the last 10 years or so in this online education space, it's like things are evolving and we want to set the bar. So I'm Ooh, glad that's you, awesome. I'm glad you know what, there needs to be like more quality in the space because there's so much garbage Yeah, that it's nice <laughs> to have something that's good. And, and we've talked about this before. Like there's just a lot of people, they put out stuff that doesn't work or maybe, you know, they'll put out an e-com product and the only thing they've done is sold Disney products illegally. Yeah. yeah. And they're they're at, they're you're trying to teach people how to do e-com yeah. where it's like, you know, I know Boom by Cindy Joseph is probably like the product one of the products as was most known for, which is a makeup brand he started, right? Yeah. 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 Um and Boom is still rocking and rolling right before COVID growing every hit, year. He was <sighs> doing like a hundred grand a day. What? Um, wow. And yeah, we're spending like him. 30k a day on uh paid ads so it's yeah. so fun but yeah i think that's the type of guy you want to learn from yeah, yeah but, but it's also like i think it's you kind of need a mix of things and i was actually thought this earlier because i i i tell people that i'm a teacher i'm an educator like that's what mm -hmm. i do and that's true like that's one side of it like you mm -hmm. have to be able to have an experience or consume knowledge distill it down and you know guide someone along a path and be their cheerleader like actually care about them not just yeah. be like i recorded videos go away i don't care you know like we've evolved past that yeah. like people and and especially, i like to think we have well, especially, <laughs> that, that's you, my you guys teaching, you that's, guys yeah. have that's right. my teaching model but, <laughs> but the other side is like you've got to do it first like i'm not just a teacher yeah. i'm like actually what i do is i like do cool shit in marketing and business yeah. and then i tell people about it because mostly and most importantly like i feel that i could quit 
running ads right now, quit doing marketing and maybe for a year, keep being able to teach just off of what I know, yeah. but I wouldn't be excited about it. Cause I get pumped yeah. about like the results, like what I'm doing. And then I transfer that excitement to my students. And it's like, that excitement is most of what they're buying from us too. And so totally. anyways. And, and it's cool to see what's working now. What's up to date. Like I, yeah. you know, I think, um, I forget who there's some, Maybe it was Clavio, maybe it was something else, but there was some solution you guys had said somewhere you just tested, we tried it, we loved it. And so there's a lot of updates that are constantly happening, whether like if you're not in the know, you're going to miss out on that. So yeah. it's super yeah. cool that you guys focus so much on keeping up to date. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, we're actually about to launch the Smart Marketer podcast. So oh, honestly, nice. Yeah, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the podcast. Um, I did a podcast for five years called Perpetual Traffic, and it was all about Facebook ads. It was a podcast that I started at. I was working at Digital Marketer. And so that show has oh, like I didn't know you five worked million Marketer downloads. Before. Yeah. So I started it as an intern at Digital Marketer back in 2012. I knew nothing gotcha. about this industry. Yeah. Um, I'd been working in a bourbon distillery and what? I moved to Austin, Texas on a whim and I was bartending, just trying to figure out what to do with my life. And I found a Craigslist ad for this marketing internship. They were advertising on Craigslist? Yeah. Well, I mean, this was like 2011, <laughs> 2012. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know. I love it. Awesome. Um, there weren't as many like ad platforms and, or job listing uh, platforms. And so what I liked about it is they positioned it as a competition. So they were hiring 12 to 15 mm. interns. And yeah. then after a three month program, two or three or four, I can't remember exactly, uh, a handful were going to get a full time job. And I was like, ooh, this is cool. Like worst case, I get paid for three months. I learn something and I decide I don't like it. <laughs> like That's yeah. the worst case scenario here. And from the first day I was hooked, like the first day was Ryan Dice, the founder of Digital Marketer, basically just like explaining how his businesses worked. And like mm -hmm. from that day, I've just been sucked into this world. Like, um, you know, I've been completely interested in it and a sponge for it. So that's how that's it started. Awesome. That's awesome. That's super cool. So what kind of um, advertising were you mostly doing on Facebook back then? like what offers or like what or, were we doing well was it was it for um was it for uh the company itself or what were you also also running just like stuff on the side like uh offers and or like affiliate yeah. or anything like yeah, that Yeah. so what's cool about digital marketer and ryan owns like 30 companies mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. the parent company is actually called idea incubator and digital marketer is just a part of that portfolio. Mm -hmm. And so he has businesses in a ton of different markets, e-commerce, local businesses, um, different media properties. So I was the full-time media buyer for digital marketer. Mm -hmm. we we're spending about three hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a month on nice. media, you know, in a pretty small market, which was fun. But I did also get to play with these other businesses. So <laughs> nice. um, and, and that's what I, you know. That's honestly a, a reason I ended up moving on from digital marketers because I just wanted to work in more industries. I, I felt yeah. kind of, I, I was ready to do more. Mm -hmm. so, That's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't realize he had, I know he had a lot of stuff going on, even like the Forex education market, I think too. But uh, yeah. uh, I didn't realize he much had much in uh, e com at all. Yeah, definitely. Especially from like 2013 to like 2017, mostly yeah. with um, Perry Belcher and Native Commerce. So the company oh, gotcha. that he runs, yeah, yeah, they had a big fulfillment center in Austin called Planet Amazing. I don't know if it's still functioning, but um, yeah, definitely Ryan's in all types of businesses. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, he's like building software now and uh, you never know what that guy's going to do. Yeah, no doubt. When um, when you were buying ads then, and even when you're buying ads now, what platforms are you on? Are you solely focused just on Facebook, or have you kind of diversified? I mean, Facebook's always been my first love. Um, I just feel it's the most interesting yeah. ad platform. <laughs> Paper late. In, in, in <laughs> terms of... Um, just the amount of information that they have, um, you know, on us as consumers and it's different yeah. types of information than other platforms have. It mm. just makes it such a really good direct response, 
cold customer acquisition tool. Like I, mm-hmm. I still, I don't think there is a better place for scalability, especially um, even in compared uh, comparison to Google, right? Because the, uh, the data in terms of how you're able to target the scalability on Facebook is just so much more. But I mean, I'm open to any traffic source that's profitable yeah. and where my people are hanging out. So mm-hmm. that does play into the consideration. So, I mean, for Smart Marketer, we're of course on Facebook, Google, YouTube. So those are really the big three. Like mm-hmm. every brand should have a presence, even if you're just using Facebook to drive cold traffic and YouTube and Google for retargeting or yeah, you, know, you totally. have a simple search campaign set up. Like it, most humans on planet earth are using those three um, platforms and spending yeah. time there. So Dude. that makes sense. I do of course dabble on other platforms, like maybe dabble in Snapchat or I've done mm. a little bit with native advertising tools and, you know, I can get success, uh, kind of like a really small success and then yeah. it feels like a waste of time to like keep up with that platform because that's a hustle yeah. so yeah. yeah i mean i just kind of always come back to facebook google youtube but like my expertise and where i spend my time is facebook and i just work with people that are good on the other platforms mm-hmm. makes sense makes sense yeah that's cool facebook, yeah, you, facebook, you've been through the like evolution it. of facebook from like you've been doing it for a while <laughs> did <Yeah. clears throat> were I mean, you on it before the pixel before i i think so so i started advertising in 2012 so i do mm-hmm. think it was before the pixel i think i think that was like the just the cpc days you know yeah and ads were so simple it's mm-hmm. really funny the first facebook ad i ever set up was actually for an offer where Ezra had partnered with Digital Marketer. And it was this oh, magazine and Ezra was on the cover. So I met Ezra back in 2012. He was the first Facebook ad that you know I ever set up. <laughs> and then now we're business partners, which is yeah. a, you know, crazy, crazy how much crazy. things can change. Yeah. Yeah. And and I mean, in regards to Facebook, I think it's easy for people to dislike Facebook or shit on it as an ad platform and there are issues with policy and there are lots of things that are complete like a complete pain in the ass right I have a job because I teach people like here are all the things that you should know about Facebook that Facebook's (laughs) not telling you because they don't know you know like it's It's not so true It's not easy, but I do believe if you keep a positive attitude towards it and you just keep moving forward, like it definitely pays off. And if you mm. stay in grumpy land, like that's not going to help you. So. Grumpy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's easy to do. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Our especially with Facebook. shut down on Monday. So Ezra launched some ads on Sunday. He's been advertising on Facebook since like the day they launched the ad platform. And the first time he's ever had an account shut down. And so we got a message from him Monday. He was like concerned and I think, you know, kind of worried about it. And I'm like, buddy, we'll get it back up. But, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> you guys, you guys probably have Part like top game. tier reps and everything. Like you guys are good. Yeah. Well, actually, for Smart Marketer, we don't. For Boom, we do, and yeah. some of the other brands. But for Smart Marketer, we don't. And so I'm actually for our students also as a, a just education. I'm recording my process going through like with chat and support oh, and nice. I feel like here's how to handle it because yeah. especially with everything going on with COVID. Uh, Facebook's employees are working from home, which is obviously changing productivity and just changing totally. how things function. So they're relying much more on the automated side of mm-hmm. policy and other ad platforms are doing this too, which causes a lot of mistakes, you know, yeah. because it's a bot making decisions. So it's so bad. I- Yeah. I mean, I've heard, I would say at least 20 other advertisers that said their ad account got shut down over the weekend. So I'm like, it, it would be okay. Not the only one. Frustrating. Yeah. I lost a BM this weekend, a a business manager, and I lost two other ad accounts in the last like seven days. There you go. You're and I get, and you, and I get them back. (laughs) I get the ad accounts back, but the business manager, it's still like pending in review. And it's been probably about like four or five days now. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, it's, out. yeah, it's part of the game, you know, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Part of it. Oh, oh, Facebook, my first love and my first hate. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Love and hate are closely related. <laughs> oh, very true. Especially when it comes to Facebook. I like bang my head against the wall daily. Like, what are you doing? I know. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. 
Um, yeah. But at Very least odd. they they've made some really smart acquisitions. I do see mm. Facebook as it stands today, like the news feed. I know I don't really spend much time um, in the news feed anymore. Where two plus years ago, I definitely did. I mean, the only time I really go to the news feed is to get into Facebook groups where my students are and I know I need to answer questions. Like it's business yeah. for me. No. Um, it's, I'm not like entertaining myself there. And so I feel like that's consumer Molly coming out, not marketer Molly. And um, yeah, I think that's what's interesting to understand. Like that's probably going to happen and that part of the platform will evolve. But that's why Facebook purchased Instagram and that's why yeah. Facebook has WhatsApp and that's why Facebook has Facebook Messenger and that's why Facebook's doing everything that they're doing with virtual reality. And mm -hmm. like just, I think- And the audience network. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just what is so cool about Facebook is their ability to see into the future. And now mm -hmm. they're not only just seeing into the future, they're building the tools that are going to be the future. You know? yeah, totally. So like they're in a league of their own now, but- I think that's important for especially marketers or business owners watching like it's okay if things like that evolve it doesn't mean that like facebook advertising isn't going to work like it's actually good that that's happening because that is when a platform goes obsolete right but they oh. are evolving so that that doesn't happen um yeah and you know it's it's not that people are going to quit signing into Facebook. I mean, how many apps do you, are you signed in through Facebook? Like yeah, this, no, the world totally. would crumble tomorrow if that wasn't an option. Um, mm -hmm. So just a little <clears throat> rabbit hole. I don't know why yeah. I went down that one, but. Um, no, but it makes sense. It's a relevant yeah. point too. Like, um, you know, Google obviously bought YouTube and has Google uh, display network, which, which is massive. Mm -hmm. I don't think people realize how big the, uh, the audience network on Facebook could be. And like you said, WhatsApp is still early. Instagram is still crazy high. And even though Facebook may have dropped, um, it's not the end of it for sure. If anything, it just compounds all their targeting and their reach long term. Yeah. yeah. I think what really surprises me is how some of these new placements just like start working randomly on ads that aren't even meant for it. Because like most of the time, yeah. and I'm a pretty lazy marketer um, for some stuff and I'll run automated or like auto placements and stuff. And they'll be- I always do auto. Yeah, auto just- works right um and now it's like facebook's even starting to convert your images into videos so it can hit other placements and you're just like what are you doing Amazing. but like i'm angry you're doing this but at the same time like holy shit it's working <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean that's a big struggle i think for marketers that have been doing this more than three or four years i would say yeah currently in this environment because we are used to having to sort of hack the system. Like, mm -hmm. how do I set up this super complicated campaign with all yeah. the gender split out in countries and oh my God, yeah. how am I even, I've got carpal tunnel from like clicking yeah. so much, you know? Yeah. But that's what Forcing you had Forcing bid to, amounts, like everything. Yeah, like total pain, but that's what you had to do because the system was stupid. Like you had yeah. to tell them everything. Well, think of it. I mean, it is machine learning. Facebook mm -hmm. and Google employ 70% of the humans that work in machine learning that are like developing wow. those systems. Yeah. Facebook and Google that are ad platforms. Like yeah, yeah, totally. Right? That is insane. Yeah. And the reason for that is they want it to get smarter and it does. Every single data point that that system collects, it then informs it and it makes it smarter. And so us as advertisers need to understand that and embrace it because it goes against, like mm -hmm. you said, you're lazy, but I recommend to all my students almost always use auto placement yeah, because totally. let Facebook do the work. Even if you could get a lower CPA in this like little area, you're still going to screw yourself on volume of results. Like just let them do it. Mm -hmm, and yeah. so I think that's a big shift for a lot of media buyers. And I know one that I've had to really make and that I try to, to help others with. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No doubt. If um, anything too, I think a lot of skill from media buyers won't come so much from like the targeting and the analyzing necessarily of the data, but more of the creative and the approach as a whole. Yeah. And I'm also finding that Facebook is just so all about new content and you can burn out your content super fast at, at scale. So if you, if you're good at creating ads, like Tyler said, uh, creatives and ads and landing pages, whatever it may be, you're, you're in the clear. Cause Facebook's like, sure. New shit. We love it. We'll give you the best yeah. traffic possible. 
I mean, that's the hustle here, right? Like yeah. that is the game of a media buyer is sort of the constant production of these assets. Like mm -hmm. I feel like media buyers, we just go through this cycle where it's like, okay, we're going to build something new. We're going to launch it. We're going to troubleshoot it, scale it while we're maintaining this other stuff. All right, mm -hmm. we're going to keep going through yeah, this process. Yeah. And yeah. that's what's fun. And I love that you brought that up because I think that's a huge benefit for this. It's like spending way less time button clicking. Like I'm the most hands-off media buyer I can be because I want to spend all my time on the mm. stuff that really matters. And cool. for me, like it will still be targeting. Like I think that that's still a huge missed opportunity for people right now in terms of like, the, the machine is getting smarter. So targeting broad works, of course mm -hmm. it works, but a lot of folks are missing out on scale because they're not doing that interest research and going after all of those interests that their mm -hmm. competition never thought to target. Mm -hmm. So therefore is very cheap and might be a part of the market that they wouldn't have reached otherwise. And like with, with boom, for example, this is, this is um, just kind of showing this. Um, you know, spending about twenty twenty five thousand dollars a day on Facebook. Obviously, most of that is cold acquisition. Mm -hmm. And before, like the last few years, Boom has mainly relied on lookalike audiences and then an ad set or two that is just broad, open targeting because mm -hmm. they're trying to reach women over the age of fifty. They've got a shit ton of of pixel yeah. data. Like this is going to work the best, and it did. Mm -hmm. But when we started doing that. And then I spent like probably eight to 10 hours down a rabbit hole finding interests of like, where would my mom be hanging out on Facebook? Mm -hmm. Or like, where would this audience be hanging out on Facebook? So then we added that into the mix and they had their best Facebook campaign ever. I think the spin was like 1.5 million and the return was 2.5 million. Wow, that's over a solid ROI. Of about yeah, over the course of about two months, we generated 30,000 new customers. This was going to a pre-sale article, 50 makeup tips for women over the age of 50, but we were still optimizing for purchase. Like this was very much a direct response play. And yeah. of course, those broad audiences and lookalikes, like they did the best, mm -hmm. <laughs> but there were thousands of customers that we wouldn't have acquired if we didn't use those other targeting options. And like women over the age of 50, it was like actresses that they would have known from back in the day, interests like old time music, That's different, smart. you know, clothing boutiques that they would shop at, like Chico's. I just called my mom and interviewed her and just <laughs> asked her a bunch of, like books, um, you know, you there's so many rabbit holes you can go down and people don't realize how many interests there are inside that detailed targeting box like there's yeah. not a list of them they're not printed out anywhere the only way you find them is by trying to type them in you know by calling your mom and, and your competition isn't doing that so i think that will still be very important um, and it always will be important on Facebook until they change, if they ever change how that works. I don't mm. think they will because that's so important. But anyways, um, I, I think, but yes, of course, always copy creative. Like that's yeah. a huge name of the game. Like, you know, who you're speaking to, like, also, are you using multiple hooks? I mean, that's when people mm. really have trouble with scale is they're relying on like the same method over and over just here now I have emojis and now I reworded it and it's like yeah no, now I have a different like, image a completely different angle like don't yeah. just change the color like do you actually have to think <laughs> yeah absolutely what you just described there me <laughs> <laughs> but like I've spent like 80k a day on Facebook so whatever it worked hey you probably had a really good offer <laughs> <laughs> yeah no doubt yeah. I How often know. do you find on in the e-com world, you have to kind of uh, change up your angle per year, like say on, you know, because we're talking about boom specifically, like do you find a, like twice a year, you guys have to come out with something new or does something yeah. get a pretty good run life? Yeah. Around, around that, like, for example, with boom, the overall hook is always, you know, we are pro age. We celebrate aging. We're not going to mm. tell you anti wrinkled this, that mm -hmm. all the other people, like it's a very us versus them, like mm -hmm. good yeah, versus yeah. evil hook. Smart. And, and it's genuine and it's true. So first off that in itself, like if I had to pick one reason it's successful, that is the reason. Mm -hmm. But, um, so the five makeup tips pre-sale article, we've never 
been a, we, we haven't found a pre-sale article that works better than that. So still most like 95% of cold traffic is going to that pre-sale article, mm -hmm. but we do change up the hooks from an ad standpoint, um, definitely twice a year. So right now what's working really well, and you guys could check these out in the Facebook ad library. Anybody listening, just type in boom by Cindy Joseph is the Facebook page. I'm sure there's, they, they will be running for a while because mm -hmm. they're working really well, but it's a ton of user generated content where we actually had customers and, um, different, um, sort of models that looked our age, but also mm. looked very like native in the feed shoot really good video footage. So most of these people are like sitting on their couch or they're sitting at home. This isn't highly produced. It's like real women. Some of them have gray hair, like they're showing themselves putting on the makeup, but they're talking about different hooks. Like, you know, how their husband responded to them when, you know, he mm. saw her her after she put the makeup on and wow. like mm -hmm. I mean I could rattle off a ton you guys can go watch the videos but we have different women so eight to ten women at a time so you know we're resonating with different kind, markets different people. yeah like <laughs> kind of everybody hopefully um, are, they, and then, are they separate videos yeah. or are they all uh, made into one they're separate videos oh, cool. uh, they all use the same format so what we're changing is the front so the front gets swapped out um, for mm. a different um, a different woman, and then the middle and the end are the same. And you guys can go watch those and see. That's Some of them are cool. six minutes long. Wow! Um, but I think the middle and the end are pretty important to to build some authority, mm -hmm. credibility, position the product. But mm -hmm. yeah. that user generated content, especially for ecom, where like ecom has it so easy. You guys just demonstrate the product with some good marketing and people are interested like with mm -hmm. info and anything else there's so much build up <laughs> yeah totally so especially with ecom yeah user generated content is creates awesome creatives lots of creating there uh bottom and top of funnel yeah you guys have pitched that for a while because i remember you had um the the testimonial funnel that you guys would offer to people for email after uh someone would buy and that worked great we used it on our ecom store it's really yeah. solid. Yeah. Do you guys want to dive into that and explain that what that is so people can use it? I'll let uh, Molly do it because she can probably do it 10 times better than I can. <laughs> yeah, what's cool, we actually in a few weeks have a product coming out called Ambassador Blueprint. Yeah. And because this has evolved from this testimonial funnel where essentially after mm -hmm. someone buys, I don't know how... Um, how many days after, I think like a week, they're sent an email where they are offered a gift card in exchange for a testimonial and there are instructions mm. there. So it's a great way to get testimonials. But what we're doing to get this uh, user generated content mostly is through an ambassador program where the customer support team and the social media team are reaching out to influencers, for example, who will like promote your product to their audience. We don't care about them getting us traffic. We just want their content. So yeah. we give them free product in exchange for their video, which still looks very native, but is more polished than something a customer would send you because they're gotcha. an influencer and they yeah. kind of know how to do that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They so, get it. Um, yeah, yeah. I wasn't responsible for building this out. So I don't know a ton of the details, but essentially we're using this ambassador program with influencers and through customer service. If we can tell there is a satisfied customer, the reps know to, you know, offer free product or, you know, um, uh, some sort of coupon in exchange for this content, but that's what has been so powerful in, in terms of generating these creatives. Like they're much more than testimonials. They're mm -hmm. like testimonials on steroids. You know, <laughs> It's like a testimonial, but that person is like selling your product for you. Um, yeah, totally. If that makes sense. Yeah. That's Na awesome. Native or real, like you call it native. I just call it like real people, I guess it's, it's always worked so much better. I find if you try to do anything over professionally on Facebook, it never yeah. really works out at all. Yeah. I mean, the reason is it, it's common sense. We are used, like consumers are used to seeing real people in their mm -hmm. feed. They like their sister's posts. They share Especially their- Especially on social media. 
Yeah, yeah, you're on social media. So if you show up looking like an ad, I mean, yeah, there are some polished ads that can work well. But if you show up looking like an ad, you look like an ad. Yeah. <laughs> People don't like ads. Yeah. You yeah. show up and you fit in and you relate to their life. That's why, again, I think targeting is so important. Like knowing, I love to really know my avatars. Say, hey, moms, this is why this product is for you. Tell a story about a mom. Like make it so that she stops and she's like, wow, is this one of my friends? <laughs> yeah, totally. And that experience. If you can do that, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that experience generates the social proof. It generates the, which social proof is so important in terms yeah. of how we rank in the auction. It's even more important now over mm. the last year since the Cambridge Analytica stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, social proof is so heavily weighted that that is a big reason you're successful. And then of course people are clicking and, and <laughs> building trust with you also. Yeah, totally. Something about that social proof you brought up. So do you use uh, dynamic ads at all? No, because of that reason. Interesting. So I primarily use dynamic and it works like amazing for me, but the social proof is an issue on it. Um, yeah. So you don't use them at all. I get it. That makes sense. That yeah. totally. I mean, I think it's just the type of marketing I do also. Like yeah. if, if I had like, I, I don't mean this in a negative way, but if I was setting up like a generic marketing campaign yeah. and I'm like, cool, I've got a bunch of headlines and yeah. like images and I'm just going to test it. Yeah. then I would use that, but that's rarely what I'm doing. Like I've usually got an avatar with like the creative Smart. matches, the yeah. copy, like mm. it's very customized. And so dynamic creative wouldn't even make sense because yeah. none of it, none of it, it would wouldn't match. match. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And that then makes the sense. Proof thing, it's like, that's almost, uh, that's, that is the biggest hurdle for me with, with mm -hmm. dynamic. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Interesting. Just because like, for example, with boom, those, that campaign I just told you guys about, the $2.5 million campaign, like crazy successful. A big part of that is that most of the ads we were using had social proof, like 5,000 shares, yeah. 15,000 reactions. It's wow. like, if you have that and you've got your targeting and then we come out of the gate at like 15K a day, the momentum is yeah. just yeah. insane. Yeah. And so I just find like, especially when I'm at extreme scale and I'm launching big campaigns like that, I really need those ads that have that social proof or out of the gate, it can just get like a, a little depressing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's talk about that. Do you mind kind of uh, giving some insights on the scaling process you go through? Like there's, there's different approaches. I've heard people duplicate yeah. ads, increase budget each time. There's like, yeah. you know, some people only do 20% a day. What is it that you guys kind of go through when you're scaling the campaign on Facebook? Yeah, it's interesting talking about or teaching scaling. It's an interesting topic. Okay. What I want to say, scaling is an interesting topic to teach. <laughs> and the reason for that is that Scaling has everything to do with what just occurred in the campaign. Like the one thing that all campaigns that are being scaled have in common is that it's working, which is positive. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. that rarely happens. Making money. So something is working. We have proof of concept enough to do more with it, um, which we don't celebrate that enough. Like most people are like, Molly, how do I scale, 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 scale? And I'm like, hey, I guarantee 90% of people have never even generated a, you know, or had proof of concept, right? Yeah, exactly. um, so scaling for me is like a very reactive thing. Every campaign is very different. Like it's hard to give you a blueprint of what I do because it changes every time. Like what, mm. is this a promotion? Is this an evergreen campaign? Is this e-commerce? Is this information? Because Legion is very, very different from, you know, direct to consumer optimizing for a purchase right out of the gate. Uh, but that said, I do have a few guidelines that I follow. So in terms of like vertical scaling is what I call budget increasing. So mm -hmm. something's working, let's just do more with what we have. <clears throat> Usually I increase the budget about 50% every three to seven days. 
I'm pretty conservative. Now that's for an evergreen campaign, something that could run forever. I'm like mm-hmm. every three to seven days, three on the more aggressive end for me, seven on the more like relaxed. I just want this to last forever, Molly. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. That's kind of my sweet spot. Now, if we're in the middle of a promotion and I'm running leads for a webinar that's in three days or it's a flash sale, then you know, I might double or triple, like I'll go Mm -hmm. hog wild, who knows. Mm -hmm. But if I want like that three to seven day, about 50% every three to seven days is what I found to be like, if you think about Facebook is like, uh, I don't know, this animal that you're feeding, this is a terrible analogy, (laughs) but like, and you don't want to like, yeah, you don't want to like overfeed Facebook, but you don't want to underfeed Facebook because if you do either of those, you know, your CPA goes up, like your return on ad spend gets all wild. Yeah. Yeah. You guys know that it's why, that's why increasing the budget is always scary. (laughs) So like that is sort of the sweet spot of like Facebook's fed. This is steady. Like let's, you know, uh, kind of take it slow. But of course that's not always the case. Um, but for me, when something's working and I'm ready for scaling, like increasing the budget's easy. And that's pretty much what I do. I don't do a lot of going in and turning off genders that aren't working and like making the age groups smaller and like throwing in other stuff. Like any, like I said earlier, any tweak, and you guys know this, any tweak you make to the campaign, you have the opportunity that you just blew that whole thing away. (laughs) You made that change and the whole thing could just, you know, fall to the ground. And so I, I just try to let Facebook, let it do let Facebook do its thing. Um, And most of my focus in that time is on what I call horizontal scaling. So this thing worked, people want this offer. It's for a price that I can pay. Now, how can I get it in front of more people? So I'm going back to my list of interests. I'm creating new campaigns with new ad sets with all those other interests that I found during my research using the same post IDs as the ads that were in my test campaign. And Mm -hmm. I'm creating as many of those campaigns as I can. Yeah, Yeah, Mm -hmm. so I've got the social proof and now I'm just saying, okay, Facebook, now go over here, right? The people Mm -hmm. are over here, they're Mm -hmm. over here. And also launching a campaign with just broad targeting and just lookalike. So, and new campaigns because we're in CDO now, like before that would have been creating new ad sets, of course. But um, so, you know, I'm I'm trying to scale in that way first. Like Mm -hmm. I've got ads that work. I just want to put them in front of more people. That's no more work for me really than just building new campaigns. Like, let's do that. And then my next step from there is kind of like, okay, strategically, are there any other hooks like we talked about earlier, any other creatives? I think that based off of what I'm seeing in terms of the response to my initial ads, is there anything new I can create to go back and add to my older campaigns possibly Mm. or even my new campaigns that will just help with fatigue? Because with scale, what you're mostly fighting is fatigue. So then I'm kind of going into that new asset creation mode that we talked about. And then I kind of go a full step bigger and I'm like, okay, you know, are there like completely different avatars I could go after? Like I worked for uh, Panda or I ran ads for Panda Planner um, last year and they sell planners and they're really cool planners, but there's nothing other than they're like scientifically proven to make you happier, which is cool. Really? Um, Yeah. But there's not like a true hook there right? Yeah. yeah. Like, it's not like I can go out and target people that like notebooks on Facebook and like, this is going to be a hit. Like, that, yeah. It doesn't work like that. So with that business, I gathered a ton of user generated content, kind of figured out where my buckets were. And I went after moms and it worked mm-hmm. really, really well. Then I went after people dealing with anxiety and depression and people kind of looking at meditation and therapy to help with that. We went after entrepreneurs, architects, and like that was a huge part of scaling for that business. And I didn't even change the copy on the landing page. It was just switching out ads with new stories, you know? Yeah. Wow, this, made my, cool. this made my mom this made my mom life better. You know, I have four kids and before I felt like I was even gonna miss their birthday and let alone clean the house. And so you know, you I have used long this stories planner. like that in your ad copy? Oh yeah. And I use this planner and, 
you know, now I have a, a stability in my life. And it's like, cool, yeah. you just made this planner, which you could probably buy at Target. Like, love you, Mike, if you're watching this. No, like the product's awesome, but like they could get this <laughs> item anywhere, yeah. but I'm showing up and telling their story. That's it. And then for those, I was using a carousel of images of that person. So that's why like dynamic creative wouldn't work for me yeah. in a lot of these scenarios because it's different. Yeah. So anyways, I'm going to a higher level and saying, okay, are there other avatars this is applicable to? Um, is Are there other offers even? Like maybe it's a lead magnet that's working really well. Like can I create another one that the market would like that's like different but slightly s similar? Uh, mm -hmm. Another product even? So <laughs> another rabbit hole but those are molly's like levels no, of I scale <laughs> I love that. yeah and, and honestly too i think it comes back down to like a foundational standpoint that a lot of people may be you know overlooking is like who is your customer avatar at the end of the day and like maybe there's more than just three maybe there's 15 or 20 to go after mm. yeah and you know in marketing before we were able to do the laser almost creepy targeting we're able to do on these platforms today like avatars were kind of a joke. It's like, I yeah. serve women and her name's Sally and she's 44 and she has two kids and she makes over a hundred thousand, a bunch of demographic information. And yeah. when people yeah. come to me with that now, I'm like, are you kidding me? Number one, none <laughs> of that really matters. That's not, not all of your people are that way. Like let's go deeper because we're able to target people on a deeper level. So like yeah. when I'm targeting marketers, I know what tools you guys use. I know what books you're, you're reading, what podcasts, the authority figures that you're following. Like that's the type of mm -hmm. stuff we should be thinking about with our people. What are they typing into Google? What are they typing into YouTube? What blogs, forums? I mean, I think that that's my strongest skill as a marketer. Like I'm weak in a lot of areas, but that connection to humans and just curiosity about humans, like how do our mm -hmm. minds work? What, it, you know, diving into an avatar. When I start working with a new avatar, I'll get lost for hours in Google searches and Amazon reviews, <laughs> just trying to learn about that person. And that is what will set you apart, um, especially totally. on a social platform. So yeah, no doubt, especially that on a social platform. Takeaway. That's I love that that was your takeaway because for me, I get really frustrated um, in sort of the marketing circle, 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 sorry, it's getting late guys, around so <laughs> traffic because everybody wants to talk about scaling or hacking or like duplicating and then squeeze it and then do this and then move it over here and then blah, blah, blah. I'm like, guys, yeah, that's cool. And it might work for a few months, but use that brain power <laughs> to develop assets and knowledge that you could apply to any platform um, yeah. at any moment. Um, so yeah, that's, that's fun. Yeah, no doubt. That's super fun. That's cool. Damn. Nerd um, now. Pardon? We're nerding out. <laughs> oh, I know. I, know. I was going to say. <laughs> it's great. Cause like I, I eat this shit all day. Like I love it. Love it. I love it. I know Tyler does too. I can sit him, see him sitting there just thinking about I have all like the different... three ideas right now that I'm trying to not forget. <laughs> That's the biggest problem is like remembering them all. Right, write them, I, write I, them I, down. I, Nobody cares. This is not a yeah, right? show. <laughs> yeah. Write it down. Write it down. It, it is interesting too. Like uh, one thing that we've done more of is uh, looked at like an audience of like what could be applicable to that audience and then acquiring that lead and then seeing the different ways we can monetize that lead. Smart. That's been a different approach that we've done as opposed to just trying to sell the lead off is seeing how much value we can add to that lead from different points, all based on that. But we've never yep. gone down to the actual person. And I actually recently hired a, a Facebook agency for one of uh, my campaigns. And uh, the first thing they did was like, they asked me probably like 80 questions on customer avatar. Awesome. And it was such a fucking pain in the ass. But at the yeah. end of the day, I'm like, wow, I didn't realize I had at least four demographics here that I was going after. And we've already yes. done like, you know, seven figures on this audience. So it wasn't like we knew nothing. Yeah. We generated revenue as profitable, but the, the level of depth we could go was so much further. And uh, we actually just lit up the campaign yesterday and our cost per acquisition dropped. And so That's it was pretty awesome. cool to see the results from it. 
Yeah. And that's just the beginning. And I think for most of us, like with smart marketer, it's easy for me because I am the avatar. Like I am Mm. the marketing nerd that we're talking to, but especially in businesses where like, I'm not a mom, that was a whole rabbit hole I needed to go down. Or if you are not that person, or especially if you don't know that person, like for boom, it's a little easier because I can just imagine my mom or call my mom. But that is, is really important. You and your mom must have quite the relationship. She never knows what you're going to say. <laughs> so true. Um, <laughs> she, she loves it though. She's like, I watched your Facebook live. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm proud of you. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> that's great. That's it is very great. interesting to like really get relationship oh. with your customer avatar, like to have the live one. Did I die? Yeah, a little bit. It's okay. Oh, I was just saying it's, it's really interesting to get that one-on-one relationship. There's a, there's a healthcare company locally in town. They've been asking for some advice and stuff. And so the other day it was stupid because everything's closed, but I drove outside one of their competitors and I just sat in the parking lot. I don't even think I told you about this yet, Gabe. You're so um, and just, I want to see, <laughs> yeah, literally, but I want to you see who in walked there. in. Yeah. Who's walking in and out of those doors because that's the people yeah. ultimately I need to connect with. Absolutely. I mean, people, uh, again, I think there are a lot of folks who think that success with Facebook means being very like good in the platform, right? Like that's yeah. what's going to give me a lot of success. Whereas a lot of my students that have been the most successful have mm. actually never had experience um, in Facebook ads ever but they have a ton of experience, especially face to face with their customer. So like, for example, people that go to trade shows, local businesses, any brick and mortars, Mm -hmm. anyone that does, you know, calls, virtual calls, my friend, Michael King, he does marketing for uh, LASIK practices. We work on a project together. And so he's always talking to potential uh, you know, uh, people that want to have LASIK surgery. And so he could regurgitate to you everything that they would say. He can have a two-way conversation in his head with that person (laughs) because of how many reps he has, you know, in conversation with them. So that is not to be taken lightly because that is what matters. You can Mm -hmm. literally enter the conversation in their mind. Um, and you know, Uh, that's the secret sauce. And that's the goal of Facebook, I think, is overall is just to make get more people using it, more people on it, and make it as easy as possible for the average show because everything's going that way. Eventually, yeah. like we won't even be going out to go shopping to do anything. I mean, right now we're not going out to shop to do anything, but future casting here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, this was all just a test to see how you guys would hold up. <laughs> I love it. And and it's a good test, like for us as digital marketers, it's like, wow, um, we are more prepared for this than anybody. I mean, I think yeah. for me, it hasn't been a huge lifestyle change. I mean, it's still a yeah. serious issue and um, you know, I, I feel for what's going on, but it does reaffirm my career path for me. I don't yeah. know if you guys feel that, but like, <laughs> for sure. you know, this is just causing a further shift um, or a, a mm-hmm. shift to happen more quickly. Mm-hmm. And that shift is coming our way. So it's like, holy yeah. doubt. And I think also just back to the Facebook thing really quick, I mean, the the biggest thing Facebook wants is trust with the public, trust with their users. Yeah. That is still the biggest concern. Facebook is still under so much scrutiny for privacy Mm -hmm. and blah, 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 blah. So that it's really most simply about who gives the best user experience. Mm -hmm. And that is shown by the consumer in forms of social proof in forms of them clicking over to your website, spending a good amount of time there, maybe crawling a few uh, pages deep into your website, and you know them actually taking the action that you say you're wanting when setting the objective. So mm-hmm. you know if you say you want purchases, are people actually going over to purchase? Or mm-hmm. you know you said you want video views, are they watching the video? And so if you can provide that. Uh, you will win. Your costs will be cheap. You will get yeah. what you want and Facebook will continue to reward you. So I, I think that, that that's just what you always have to keep in mind because this platform is built for consumers. It's not built for advertisers. That's how Facebook monetizes, but they care way more about them than they do about us at this point. Yeah, um, so, I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah keep, no doubt. Keep that in mind. 
yeah. one thing I wanted to touch in while you're kind of kind of chatting before just about the current climate of things because obviously um, I've heard from a lot of people personally we mentioned this on a previous podcast um, a lot of people don't, can't work right now they literally yeah. cannot go into their jobs and I'm very grateful for this whole career path too because so far it's working out with the range of e-com brands you guys have and even within smart marketer has COVID affected you guys at all yeah definitely um, we actually just did a Facebook live about this on Ezra's brand page on Facebook. Mm. So if any of you guys, you can go back. Um, I believe it was the beginning of April, end of March. You'll see the recording there, but we went for, I think two hours about this topic. Um, just if you guys want to go more in depth, but yes, we are definitely being affected. So boom, for example, was doing 90 to a hundred thousand dollars a day before, all of this happened. Um, in the first week when everything was shut down, it dipped down to more around 30 to 40. So wow. you know, almost a 50% decrease, which makes perfect sense. We're targeting women over the age of 50. They are the most susceptible to this and probably the most mm. fearful. Um, they're also quarantined at home and not really buying makeup. <laughs> yeah, they're not worried so, about going you know, out. I think with this whole COVID situation, like in terms of business, context is so important. It's like, who are you serving and how are they affected? You know, and is your product or service still relevant to them in their current life? And mm -hmm. if the answer is no to either or both of those, you need to pivot mm -hmm. <laughs> um, in, in that category. But so with Boom, things are um, getting better. So for about a week, it wasn't looking great. Ad spend was more down to like 10,000. And then uh, fulfillment was shut down. And so... Mm. Ezra is only able to operate for about three or four months with what he currently has. Mm -hmm. um, so he's decided to just, uh, we've gone down to $2,000 a day in spend. We're at break or boom is at break even as a company. And he's just riding it out a few months until uh, they're able to get uh, more in stock. So that's the plan there. But he did run a flash sale that did around $100,000. That was a nice cash inf infusion to the business. Just added a little spin about COVID and giving back. And he gave a 15% off discount, which he really never does that, mm -hmm. that um, high of amount of a discount. So I thought that was a really smart play. Also taking the opportunity right now to run a few giveaways and doing a lot more lead generation than we would ever mm. traditionally do in an e-commerce business. So mm -hmm. yes, it has affected on that front. And then with Smart Marketer, it's affected us less, obviously, uh, because we're a completely different business. We are busier than we've ever been because we serve business owners and marketers who are, mm. you know, have questions, they want to talk, they want to you know, they need help. And that's what we do. Um, in terms of revenue and promotions, we have put off a few promotions that we planned because we felt they weren't relevant and it just didn't make sense. And so we just kind of stayed quiet for a little bit. We didn't feel like we needed to send out like an update or anything. We just wanted to sit on it. And then we decided to do that free webinar and just put it out on, uh, put everything out on the table. Here's our experience. Here's what we think you should do. Um, you know, here's, here's kind of all of our thoughts. So that's what we're doing with Smart Marketer and things are kind of getting back to normal with Smart Marketer. Now we're going to start running some more promotions. Nice. Uh, we're, we're really focusing right now on asset building. So, um, you know, I'm the full-time media buyer at Smart Marketer now. So really figuring out like, what are all of our front end offers? What do we want that customer journey to truly look like getting the creatives made the hooks. So, you know, this is a good time, I think, especially as a media buyer to go deep into building all those assets and starting to test them while traffic is super cheap and yeah, uh, all that good that stuff. That is the benefit. Traffic yeah. is cheap. Yeah. I would, I would expect. A long time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'd yeah. expect people to start buying more online courses so they can find other streams of revenue, but yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I think it depends on how you position it. So most of our audience are existing business owners who I think, you know, most of us right now are um, 
being more conservative with money. I mean, even mm -hmm. on the webinar yeah. that we did, Ezra's like, don't pay your bills, like conserve as much cash as possible. Like mm -hmm. that's how you keep your, your business afloat right now within reason. Yeah. And yeah. call Amex, they'll put your bill off eight weeks. Like do anything you can do to conserve as much cash, cash as possible because the future is unknown. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think a lot of business owners have that mindset, but if we did decide to go out with more of an opportunity play, then I think that, yeah, we would be able to reposition the products and are going to reposition the products. I've got a book coming out in a few weeks that's uh, about how to get into digital marketing. So it's more oh, for nice. people that are outside of the industry. Here's how to figure out if you want to start your own business or just, you know, become an intern like me. <laughs> like, yeah. There's so many routes into um, this awesome industry. And so we're definitely going to start speaking to more audiences like that. And I think it's very timely. That is cool. Is this, uh, this book will be digital or like a hardcover? It's a hardcover. Yeah. It's called click happy. And, um, yeah, we've been working on it for a while and it will release sometime in May. So I like the title are watching the recording Molly Pittman nice. slash book. Yeah. Yes. And I, I'm reflecting a lot of the balance to, of, um, in this book, I'm talking about our industry, but also just how important life outside of it is and mm. struggles that I've had, you know, in those, those areas, um, just to help other people. So that's where the happy Very cool. comes from. That's super cool. I like it. Yeah, man. We've been going to this for an hour now. Time flies when you're listening to Molly. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> this has been fun, guys. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I likewise. Feel like I've been I feel like I've been rambling, but I guess that's what happens when you're on a podcast. It's I just love yeah, like, rambling. It's, it's great. <laughs> I think there's a lot of really good foundational stuff that you brought up that we don't always get the chance to do. So I'm really mm -hmm. glad you did. Uh, just so people know, like Gabe and I have bought Smarter, Smart Marketer courses before. Yeah. So if you guys are interested in checking out good courses, they have, they have actually excellent stuff. Yeah. I think we've got the ads one and the email one. Yeah, um, I and I think I had one before good. that, but it was so long ago I don't even remember what it was. <laughs> well, yeah. we're we're pumping out the hits, so smart yeah, and even the old stuff is still applicable. Like I yeah. feel like there's a lot of good stuff in all of it. So, and you guys, oh, yeah. um, you guys have a free podcast too, also. And you said you were starting another one. So we're starting another one. We don't currently. So the perpetual traffic, the podcast that um, I recently am not the co-host of. Yeah. That has run the last five years. There's 250 episodes on wow. there. If you are wow. interested in paid traffic at all, like definitely go there. Uh, that we've been doing that every week for five years, which is crazy. But I decided to, that's owned by Digital Marketer and I mm -hmm. really want to build a podcast with Smart Marketer. So that's what we're planning right now. I've got all the post-it notes out here. So nice. you guys should it. expect that soon. But yeah, we've got that coming, Ambassador Blueprint, which... It's like 15 videos explaining how we built out a whole ambassador program to get that great ad creatives and all of that. Um, we do have a new email marketing course we're going to be promoting. My book's coming out. Um, I'm going to be on the Smart Marketer blog a lot more at smartmarketer.com. So yeah, we're just putting it out wherever we can. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Other that's than awesome. public speaking right now, yeah. that's the weird part of this. But Good. no <laughs> Fun. Good reading and watching <laughs> during quarantine. You guys got all yeah, no exactly. doubt. Yeah, exactly. That's perfect. Well, and, in, and, and YouTube, like any uh, Ezra is so amazing. So mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, his Instagram TV is really great. He's putting yeah. a video up every I few days had that. and like covering last week. It was about money and like really how to handle money in a business and in your personal life. He just talked about how to build a personality brand, COVID stuff. And so much, so. obviously all that stuff is free too. Yeah, that's just on yeah. Instagram TV. So if you, at Ezra Firestone on Instagram and uh, check that out. And I'm at Molly Pittman Digital. So if you guys, that's definitely where we're both the most active is on Instagram. So IG, I dig it. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Well, I'm sorry. I'm just like, grab my phone to like, follow you. I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> like, don't forget. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, literally. Yeah. I, yeah. I have a terrible memory. I'll forget in like two minutes. I get it. I get it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Thank you for everyone listening today. For everyone watching, please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube. And for everyone listening, please give us a five-star review on iTunes, Spotify, or Stitcher.
Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. I know it's late there. Have a good one. Thanks, Thank guys. you.